Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Sam Marshall Law Show. I am your host, Sam Marshall Law, and today we have a very special guest, someone I've known and admired for a very long time from the vibrant stages of New Brunswick, New Jersey in the early 2000s where we performed many shows together. To the global stages he graces today, this artist has consistently pushed the boundaries of hip-hop. His adventurous spirit is not just evident in his life, but also in his music. He's a globetrotter, always on the move, exploring new places, and infusing his experiences into innovative music videos. Born Kyle Sutton, but known to the world as Kyle Raps, he's an artist who's not afraid to evolve. From his early days as skeptic at Rutgers to becoming black skeptic and finally emerging as Kyle Raps, his journey has been a dynamic has been dynamic in his music journey. His discography is a testament to his versatility with collaborations with people like KRS One, Homeboy Sandman, Action Bronson, just to name a few. Uh, Kyle's music is a reflection of his life experiences, and we are proud to have him today. Hailing from Grand Rapids, Michigan, to New Brunswick, New Jersey, to everywhere, to Mexico City, to now Los Angeles. Kyle, we thank you so much for having us today. Brother, thank you and welcome to the show. Side, thank you so much for having me, man. Wow, that was a great introduction, man. I don't think any introduction will ever top that, bro. That was incredible. <laughs> only, only you, only you. <laughs> good, good, good. And we starting off right. So when I was doing research, I found out something immediately that I didn't know about you. I didn't know you were born in Michigan. Um, can you share a bit about your upbringing in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and and how, if any, did that influence your music? Well, I'll tell you this, man. Like I was born. Uh, I will always be, I will never be as famous as obviously the number one Grand Rapids uh, resident, which uh, which is uh, Floyd Mayweather, mm-hmm. right? Um, but I was uh, in a similar neighborhood uh, coming up uh, early, early, you know? And uh, so, you know, obviously when, it's hard to say, because this is only like the first five years of my life. So it's hard to say exactly how that influenced me, you know, but obviously we know that there's some kind of effect that your environment has on you. And, and so, you know, I, you know, it was the hood. It was, it was, you know, it, it was energy and I definitely soaked that in. And then, you know, obviously going back, thinking about Michigan and, and some of the things that, that Flint has gone through, uh, et cetera, you know, I, I, I feel like I've been influenced and had a, a little extra energy um, in that direction. So gotcha. I, think, I think that's pretty much where that is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Understood. Good answer. I understand that. Um, so, mm-hmm. After reading your biography and doing the research here, there, and everywhere, I found um, how you kind of came up. So what was it like being raised primarily by your mother in Princeton, New Jersey? So, yeah, it was interesting, man, because, you know, you know, my father's a minister, and he ended up kind of parting ways, going after his dream. They were young, you know, so I got love for him and, and his path. But, you know, um, like a lot of ministers, you know, they feel like they're getting paid by the Lord. And so they ain't really got to pay child support and all that, you know. So it left, mm-hmm. left us in a little bit of a tough scenario. But, you know, I'm grateful because my mother, she, you know, she was able to, we, you know, we lived in, a, you know, like a, a subsidized, had like a project in, in, in a town, which was also kind of rare. Because Princeton is actually a really nice town. Right. You know, people always talk, you know, how people talk on New Jersey, right? You yeah. know, Princeton's a nice town, but a lot of people don't really know. They just think of Jersey is all smokestacks or, or what have you, you know. Facts. Um, so be- yeah, right. Beautiful town. Uh, you know, I lived in like kind of the, you know, the, one of the few uh, sections where you had uh, people of color, you know, um, mm-hmm. the working the working class. Lived. My mother was a secretary for Princeton University, so she had to juggle a lot of things. You know, mm-hmm. she had two sons and, uh, you know, we were like latchkey kids. You know what I mean? She didn't really, you know, today in the era of the helicopter kids, right, where folks, you know, whether they work remotely or whatever, have a little bit more time to spend, mm-hmm. you know, uh, by the sides raising it. You know, we 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 were like... We were out, man. We were, we were, we were wild. You know what I mean? So, right, right. Um, it was cool. You know, it was cool. We had access to, you know, um, some interesting uh, facilities. You know, you go, you run up on Princeton University, what have you. Um, you know, there was some good, good places to, to, to kick it. Um, uh, but ultimately I also felt poorer than I really was. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. I mean, we weren't, we weren't doing that bad. I had a Nintendo, you know what I mean? But like, <laughs> um, but but like, you know, because there were a lot more well to do people, you know, and, and, and in that reflection, you know, it was kind of like, oh, damn, we definitely we definitely ain't got it like that. So but, you know, um, all in all, I feel really proud of the way my mother raised us, man. You know, she she 
she put her heart and soul in, into it and, and, and providing it for us. And, and, you know, my father, he, he blazed an example of someone who can, you know, be self-determinant and reach his goals. So, you know. Right. Uh, so I was just going to ask you, um, speaking into that, did your father's mm-hmm. role as a minister shape your worldview and your music at all? I would say yes. You know, uh, especially, you know, I was exposed to a lot of church, a lot of the cadence and rhythm. Uh, of, of different churches. My dad was kind of a traveler throughout the Baptist. He went Pentecostal Baptist to the more traditional uh, Black Baptist church to Presbyterian church. So I, I, I the Episcopal, which was, was a lot of white folks there. And that was like a more, a more meditative vibe, you know? So I definitely feel like I was able to get, um, pick up on those rhythms, you know, of, of the ministers, as well as the the, the music. I, you know, I, I was in choir as a, as a young person, you know, singing and stuff and, you know, getting an ear for, for melody that I think, the church is uh, particularly unique in, in delivering. Gotcha. You know so yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you, you tell me about your transition through your names? First you started as skeptic and then you changed to black skeptic. I think after a trip you took to Africa maybe, and then yeah, most yeah. recently to, to Kyle raps. Can you kind of talk about the transition from, you know, those names and how they, what, what happened yes. during your, your process and to, you know, to come to that uh, point? That, Yes, yeah, so I do that as I'm transitioning from uh, top floor to bottom floor of my apartment. Uh, so bear with me a quick second. I'm just grabbing this little sushi. So anyways, yeah, so, you know, starting out, you know, I was at Rutgers University. I'm very blessed to be part of a um, a group called Thought Breakers with my man Zach Loss, also a Jersey Zach. Cat. Word. Yep. Got a lot of love for that dude, you know. Um, and so, you know, we started out and I just kind of, I always had like a little bit of a um, question for, you know, I, I never really believed things on face value. And I think as me and uh, Zach were friends, you know, he saw me to be a little bit more skeptical in nature. So he actually named me skeptic. Oh, <laughs> um, didn't know that. When, when we were, yeah. When we were, uh, you know, coming up trying to do our, 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 our music thing there. And, um, you know, that was cool. I, I really, uh, enjoyed that. I felt like, yeah, I ended up going to, it was wild, man. I went to, uh, Liberia, um, it was a little bit later on and I was doing some work out there, workshops with, uh, uh, some ex-child soldiers. And it was interesting. It was dark. It was, uh, it was enlightening. Mm-hmm. Um, and I came back real on some real, like Pan-African energy, <laughs> uh-huh. um, just cause I felt really connected. You know, I mean, some of it was like naive. I'm in my twenties, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I don't know if you've ever seen CB4. Yeah. Um, I, I imagine you have <laughs> where, 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 um, Alan Payne is, you know, I'm black, y'all. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm black if you're black. And I'm black. Yeah. So I had a little bit of that vibe on me. <laughs> also being, also like being biracial, you know, mm-hmm. there's always that, that desire for like some kind of um, acceptance, right? right? And validation in the black community. And I think that I was definitely like, you know, feeling that uh, at the time. So I was like, I went, I leaned into it, you know? Yeah. Um, so I went with that. And then um, as I actually got the opportunity to uh, come out to LA, work with a producer and try to refine, uh, you know, like my solo, uh, you know, artistry and everything like that. So I start refining it. I, I wanted to just have like a name that this is not, my name is not like that, but like whatever. I want to have a name that was like, um, like, like Trey songs. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> like I see what you're saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Like I wanted to sound like it was part of my name and like, and it's really that simple. It's not like there's nothing crazy deep about it, you know? And, right. then, and then it just so happened that like that when I started, you know, having a more a little bit more of a serious opportunity to to build some traction in, in, in the rap stuff, you know, and I just kept it, you know, and it was just like, OK, it rolls off the tongue. I fucks with it. You know what I mean? So that's that's where I'm at. Gotcha. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I can curse, by the way, man. You, I'm not trying to. No, nah, you can curse. I, you no. know, I just had um, Ari Spears on here and I was not about to tell that man he couldn't curse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, word. Yeah. And I heard clips from that, uh, and it sounded great, man. Great, great work on that. Thank yeah. you, brother. Um yeah, yeah. so yo, speaking of um the whole black and white thing, what kind of challenges, if any, have you faced in hip hop because of being biracial, if any? Oh, you know, it's it's interesting. I feel it, it's not really like on um maybe a little bit, you know, it's not really I would say it it probably be maybe more of an advantage you know uh in certain in certain aspects because like you know um i can navigate different worlds uh-huh. you know different cultures and stuff like that a little bit more um organically you know so if i'm building with someone who you know 
who's like just like straight up, you know, grew up steeped in insular black culture. I can get to a point where if they feel comfortable with me, I feel comfortable with them. You know right. what I'm saying? Uh, for the most part. I mean, you know, there's people and there's people, but you know what I'm saying? So the um, best of both and worlds the same, sort of thing. Yeah, that type of thing. So, But also, I do think that there's that classic light skinned, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, how soft, he must be soft. He must not have had any real stuff go down, you know, in his life. You know what I mean? Is he how is he black enough, you know, to 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 you know to drop the N word or to this that the other? Right. And, and sometimes you know you you run into a little bit of that, but not so much because I find the black community in general in general to be very accepting, you know, and very loving, and 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 so and to want me to be a part of it, you know, what I'm saying to embrace, and so I, you know, that, that that's kind of more so than maybe the white community o- overall, you know, what I'm saying. So anyway, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Good answers. So. Me and you share another thing in common. We both have a song with the legendary pioneer KRS-One. Can you share yeah. the story behind how your single Love Love featuring KRS-One and Homeboy Sandman came about? And kind of just talk well, about I remember that you. I, I remember when you did a song with KRS before I did. I was like, yo, how's Sai going to do that? And I ain't got that. Nah. I was like, yo, I was like, Sai. Uh, but yo, uh, I will say that. Um, no, I remember that. I was like, yo, that's the. And you kind of you paved the way to maybe think, yo, maybe we can maybe we can reach out and talk to some of these legends and see if they get on track. So I thank you for that. For, no doubt, you know, yeah, no yeah. Doubt, no and doubt. then secondly, I, I uh, you know, I reached out. I think it was to Nabil. You remember Nabil? Yeah, yeah. Nabil West. Yep. Yeah, and I was like, yo, I kind of want to do this. And Nabil was like, yo, I actually know his manager, and you know, Nabil had put me in touch with his manager. I floated um, the track over there, and uh, before I knew it, I was like, you know, in some like crib in jersey the home studio and krs1 was rapping over the track <laughs> and i was like yeah that's crazy yeah and it was dope i mean you know obviously like i had a little bit of bread put a little bit of bread on it but like uh it was one of those things where i, I could tell that chris was like oh i'm i'm rocking with this you know what i'm saying i'm a i'm gonna give this a time of day and, and go in not just make this like a, a cash grab so he ain't he ain't, you know he ain't really he ain't believe me like that so i felt good <laughs> you well, know what i mean and, and, and we got to make a great track yeah so shout out to the teacher man yeah, word yeah. Yo, yeah. so when I like tune into what you're doing, you're here, there, you're everywhere. That like I love watching your page. It's like watching TV. You're everywhere. What is your inspiration for traveling all over the planet? And what's the favorite? What's your favorite place you've ever been? I know this is a long question, but what yeah. lessons yeah. have you learned from traveling? What are the greatest lessons you've learned from traveling? Well, first of all, I- I'll say. Um, you know, KRS, uh, you know, in, in one of his songs talked about, uh, you know, it was the rules for longevity. Right. And he talked about um, MC should have other ways of making money. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, for me, I was very fortunate to have my own my own touring theater company that shot up the Mayhem Poets, you know, that, uh, you know, was able to, you know, have a somewhat, you know, stable source of income um, for me during the, the school seasons. We had mostly school performances in theaters. To, to have to be able to take summers and do a lot of traveling, you know, off mm-hmm. top. Yep. And um, and so to have that source was was such a blessing, and I feel so grateful for that. But to to, to answer your question more more concisely, you know, um, man, one of the things I, I'll tell you I learned is no matter where you go, there you are, mm-hmm. because like you can't run, I can't run away and, and, and from my problems in Thailand, you know. For whatever, if I deal with insecurities, anxiety, depression, you know, which things I've dealt with, you know what I mean? Can't You can't find that in, in Ethiopia, you know what I mean? You can't find the answers to any of those things. One of the other things I realized is, you know, in trying to find myself through travel, one of the things I learned is I just, I just love to travel. <laughs> like, you know, uh, the, the inner work for me has has all happened, whether or not I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a, you know, uh, exotic location or I'm, or I'm or, um, here in Koreatown, Los Angeles. So, 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 you know, that, that part, but as far as, you know, pushing boundaries and limits and getting to know people across different cultures, that has been super eye opening, you know? Um, and, and, and I think that one of the things around that has been just to be grateful for what I have, you know? Um, you know, I, I've, I've gone places where I just, you know, I've seen people who, you know, the, the struggle is, is so, it's so acute, you know? And, and, and so it's just kind of like, it's so acute that like, if I catch myself, like I'm not enjoying my egg sandwich or, you know, I'm upset about, you know, my problems here, you know, I try, I, I have that, that, um, that touch point, you right. know, which really, really adds to a level of gratitude, you know, um, right. and there's, there's a lot of beautiful pl- places and beautiful people in this world. You know what I mean? And that also just gives me joy. 
Uh, do you make a lot of friends to the point where you can go back to these places or is it just kind of a one-time trip? Well, you know, I lived in Mexico City for like four years. Mm -hmm. So I have like uh, a lot of friends there. Um, and I feel, you know, I feel blessed on that level, man. So I always have that. Um, you know, I have some friends in Peru when I went down there. I have some friends in Tanzania. Uh, well, my one homie, I should say. Um, and, uh, and and I got a homie out, uh, in, in, in Kenya. Um you know, and, and, and then as, as, you know, as things have gotten digital nomadic, you know, I have some friends who are actually not local who have, you know, like who moved out places like France. I'm sure you could relate to this or, or Amsterdam and stuff like that. Um, yep. so yeah, I do feel like I do from that travel, I almost feel like, uh, like I'm a mafia made man, you know what I'm saying? Like go anywhere <laughs> and just like pull up, you know, what hip hop helps with that too. So yeah. Anyway, what was the um, most beautiful out of all those places that you feel? Uh, a couple of things I, uh, that really strike me. Uh, I went to uh, uh, the Simeon Mountains, which is in the north of Ethiopia. Mm. And um, um, I mean, just it was just so beautiful. You know, it was so peaceful. It was just like it, it was nature, but it was like it just felt like real. Um, just the energy there was real beautiful. You know, um, I, I will say, uh, you know, Colombia uh, is like. You know, like just the the the, the beaches of the Colombia, like near um near Cartagena, but like towards the south, are like whoa, like kind of mind blowing stuff. So gotcha. I definitely put that up there. Yeah. How has living in Los Angeles influenced your music and personal growth? Um. So listen, LA is crazy, man. Like all of the things they say about people being fake. Or, you know, the materialism, people are too obsessed with cars. For me, I think I've experienced it's like true. Oh, it's it like is more true. true than I would have ever thought. What's that? Oh, it is true. I thought you were going to say it's not true. Oh, you true. know. I mean, I thought no, I, true. What, for, what I experienced yeah. it was true, but I thought you were about to like flip it and say it wasn't like that. But go on, go on. No, no, it's so true, right? And so the thing that I've had to, and I'm going to start with the personal growth, you know, that I've had to really um, learn is to sort of alchemize. When they're, you know, find the gold out of situation, right? Find the gold in people, you know, uh, because and find the gold within a situation that might on its face look like, yo, this is trash. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So really utilizing, you know, tolerance, patience, you know, especially you talking about patience in traffic. Right. And then like on the level of, OK, there's incredible nature here, bro. Like. I never seen anything like this. Like I go out to, I mean, I, I, I feel like, I mean, you know this. I'm saying this for your audience who might not know. I know you know these things, bro. I know who you are. <laughs> like, like you, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, but like, um, yeah, man, like, you know, these, these mountains that are like 30 minutes away, that's like world-class mountains. That's like, that's like real beautiful stuff. You know, mm -hmm. this beach, man, that you can go surfing and that's there, but it's surfing, right? You go surfing. This is like, bro, you could surf mad like every day of the week. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's 40 minutes. And if you got the patience to wake up early, hit, the, get out there, you know, hit some traffic, like, bro, like it, it's, it's next level. So, so for me, finding that gold, finding the gold just past, like, you know, where someone might be seeming like they're only out to look for opportunity in you rather than a real connection. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, to really, to really push past that and find a point of real connection. Again, that's, that's been a, a, a form of personal growth because I've had to like break outside of my own normal comfort zone because I'm also direct. So I like, I'll tell like you, I'll tell you how I feel. I try to call it like I see it and that's not as uh, well received here. Right. You know what I'm saying? You got to like, so, so also like I have to be patient with that, you know, because I'm like, I want to just boom, like be direct and folks, you know, they, so I'm like, I got to like, I got to hold back a little bit sometimes in situations, you know what I mean? So, 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 so yeah, it's been different, man. It's, di it's definitely been different, but that's very you know, insightful. Um, you know, we here. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. No doubt. What, what drew you to surfing and like, how does it, how do you, how does it feel to consider it sort of your birthright? Cause I, you know, I checked it out. I checked out the videos and yeah. everything. So what drew you oh, to Oh, thanks man. So yeah, you know, during the, uh, it was actually during 2021 20, during the pandemic. Right. And, uh, you know, I was, I was feeling down. Like a lot of us were just like, you know, you know a little shut in all that stuff. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's a group called color the water and, they, they uh, offer free surf lessons to, to people of color, right? I should say we because I'm a part of the group now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and like, but at the time, like, it was like, yo, I went 
And they were really just like the warmth and the love. And they were like, yo, they taught me this idea of, yo, like people of color, especially people from black communities, you know, haven't had access to this huge resource, which is the ocean and and in the way that the white folks have. And when you talk about surfing and developing this relationship with the ocean, right? Like that, is, they were showing me like, oh, like, wow. And, and to me, there's like something really uh, powerful and uh, healing, you know, but when I'm in that salt water and I'm, and I'm like trying to tap into the energy of a wave and I'm in community, especially community, uh, uh, you know, of, of, of my people, like, yo, there's something super special about it. And it's different than the original, not the original, than what, than the white sort of like surf paradigm, right? right. Which is like, they competing to try to like one up each other on these waves. Cause they've had this shit their whole lives. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, I'm not saying all white people. I'm saying the the the, the pr- predominantly white folks who are in the ocean, right, a right. uh, third, mm-hmm. and experienced with it. And so it's also like for us to take up space there. You know, um, it's like it's saying like, yo, we like, yo, we we claim this shit. Like we claim this shit because like, first of all, our ancestors were thrown into this shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like real talk. Like you know, like 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 a lot of us have a lot of fear. And I think it dates back to all of that middle passage stuff. And so for me to be able to like be a part of this and they, they put me on, I'm not saying this ain't, these ain't my ideas, you know saying? Like, uh, they put me on to game of like, yo, like, nah, man, like, like the ocean is ours. You know what I'm saying? Like we're the coastal folks, you know what I mean? So like, so for that, it was really like inspiring on the birthright side of things, you know? Um, and yeah, man, that journey has just been amazing. And, 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 and like, it got me through. I gotta say, like, just do, like learning how to surf. And I'm continuing to learn. I'm not like a, ma- you know, I ain't no, you know, I only been doing it for like a few years. You know, what I'm saying that's like, you know, it's a journey. But that surf journey has, for me, has been life changing. And I just want to spread that word to as many people, especially people of color, as I can. It's like my people, I grew up with. They, they, they afraid to swim, bro. Like, you know what I mean? And I, I don't get down on them. I understand, but I'm just like, bro, like, let's do this. You know what I mean? Like, this is a huge resource. So, anyway. Yeah, that's my. No, it's not even anywhere. I'm sitting here yeah. listening yeah. intently like a little kid because I I, I, hear, I can feel what you're saying, and I've never uh, kind. I don't know if the word's afraid, but I've never I've never surfed, but I've always been kind of in awe of it, and I yeah. I understand what you mean about how the ocean can be healing. So just I everything you're saying, I can I I can feel yeah. it more than I can put into words. So what I understand what you're saying, but I you know that's dope. That's super dope. Yeah, uh, man. Yeah, man. I'll, you gotta come out and do it, bro. Like, if you come out, I'll lace you with, with you know, like some some of the homies out here too, man. And yeah, trust, bro. I'll tell you, bro. And it's like, it, I never thought it would be for me. You know what I mean? Like, I would see these dudes. I'm like, that's not for me. You watch Point Break or these movies, Blue Crush, and you're like, yo, this not. You know, like I just couldn't envision it being me until I see folks doing it. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, and and it reached out and showed me. The, the path and yeah anyways i can go on and on because i'm in love with that shit man. <laughs> but you know you know what when next time i get i get booked in la when i can get another show out there i'm gonna definitely find you so we can go surfing bro take me up on that <laughs> i am i am yeah, um, yeah. can you share a moment in general from your travels that challenged you and how you overcame it i'll tell you man this is early travels um <clears throat> I'll tell you, uh, okay, I, I, a quick one I'll say was the first time I went to Morocco. This is kind of funny because I was uh, I was young, you know. I was actually a, a Rutgers student, and I got to study abroad mm-hmm. and in Spain. And um, during, you know, the break, we went to, a few, a few of us went to Morocco. It was, Morocco it was me and three white people, okay? And um, I was terrified, bro. Like, everyone was Moroccan. And, and I don't mean that in a pejorative way. I had just never been in a country or a situation where, like, Every and I felt like everyone was staring at us. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I have, and of course, I have my own prejudices. Oh, like terrorism and things like that. So I was like, "Yo, why are these like terror?" I'm like, "Yo, this is scary." Like, it's funny because I kind of look Moroccan, uh-huh. <laughs> and like people would like come up to me and, like speak Arabic. And, and, and but the challenge for me was like, "Yo, you have like you have to. This is a di- this is a whole different vibe, and you have to be like you have to." find love here you know what i mean you can't just be run around scared because like you feel like and, and turn out they were like looking at the white folks really they didn't really <laughs> care about me but i was young and when you're young you know you have to uh you have to contend with a, a higher level of self-centeredness you know what i mean thinking it's about you thinking that people are out to get you more sometimes at least me i had some traumas mm-hmm. um so so you know um 
and then I ended up having just a wonderful time, but that was a huge challenge, you know. Um, uh, another time was uh, when I was in Mexico City living there, and I tried to get my phone fixed in the hood, and I thought I was like, I thought I was slick enough to like get the, get the deals, you know, yeah. in, in these like little spots, and they ended up taking my phone, <sighs> and um, you know, I tried to flex on them, and like, oh, bro, they came out the woodworks, bro. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, man. I was like, and, and that challenge was like, yo, look, like, you better put your ego away, like. You're not winning a fight here, bro. You know what I mean? And, and like, you just need to like walk away, realize you got God. And 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 that that was a huge lesson for me in general because I've traveled a lot to, even since then. And I'm just like, yo, I, I walk around with no chip on my shoulder like that, bro. You know what I mean? Like that's I think that's a dangerous thing for some of us. And you know, some of us are afraid to travel because we're like, you know, I ain't, I'm not the one. You know what I'm saying? Right. And if, I, and if they come to be able to put that ego away for me was so important, bro. Um, and like, yeah, so anyways, big, those, those are a couple of my challenges, you know, Shit. expanding my mind and and putting my ego away, bro. You know what I'm saying? Those are two great stories. The latter could save somebody's life. I appreciate that. No doubt. How has living yeah. in different parts of the world influenced your understanding of the global hip hop scene? Oh, insane, bro. Uh, insane. I mean, you go to Mexico City, for example, uh, it feels like the, there's parts where you feel like you're back in. Union Square in the 90s. I mean, mm -hmm. there's kids just battling, ciphering, and you're like, you know, and you're like, yo, this is just, this is wild. This is, this is incredible. And, you know, all the way to when I was, I did, I shot a video in Nairobi, mm. um, in downtown Nairobi. And like, bro, like everyone was pulling up and singing the chorus of the video <laughs> while I was, while I was doing it. And it was funny because I thought I was going to be huge in Nairobi. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> they sing the chorus and we we rocking right and right after they was done they was all like yo I was singing the chorus give me a dollar yo give me two dollars I was oh, singing the chorus oh man <laughs> I was like oh damn was, okay <laughs> but yeah humbling humbling right but but like um but just to see you know that like that 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 energy you know what I'm saying that hip hop was there and they they knew what was going on you know what I mean they yeah. knew what it was so that was cool and then of course you know you know tapping into like um. You know the, the the hip hop culture in France, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. Amsterdam, which is incredible. Uh, you know Eastern Europe. I mean, it's just like and watching. You know, being old enough to where like I remember where that, none of that existed. Mm -hmm. And I also remember when like when the people who were doing it, there were maybe like one who was like halfway nice. You know what I'm saying? And now you're like, bro, like no matter where you go, like there are nice MCs, bro. And and I think there's something beautiful about that. So yeah, facts, facts. Um. Yeah, yeah. How do you stay connected to your roots while constantly being on the move? Mm, mm. Well, you know, I got to be honest, man, that's been a challenge because, you know, uh, unlike some of my friends, you know, uh, and people I know, present company included, like I don't have children, you know, um, and so uh, my roots don't run as deep in the in, in that sense, like family, you know, um, you know, and so as a result, there's there could be some loneliness when you're traveling and when you're on the move. And for me, one of the, the key things is, you know, I have my, my, my people who I can reach out to and call. This is before Zoom, obviously, where you just you, 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 you're on the phone. You, you, you look, they used to have those international phone cards. I know you know these. You know what I mean? You're yeah. dialing all kinds of weird codes and numbers and shit just to speak to your homie back home, you know, or your Thanks. brother or your cousin. Mm -hmm. just to, and so, so I would tap into family and friends in that way. You know, um, and now it's way easier because you have Zoom and stuff like that. So, um, you know, you, you have that aspect there, um, you know. And then, of course, just like sometimes I just I just write, you know, I just like journal. And, 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 so, and one of the things that helps me to stay in touch with that stuff, with, with my roots, is like if I'm journaling and, and, and I, I like to journal memories, especially positive memories that I've had from growing up or from my life, from friendships and things like that just so I can maintain the level of gratitude, you know, um, and, and, and a sense of like, okay, yeah, you come from something, you know, su substantial, you know, you have, you have substantial connections and, and, and ties. So yeah, that's, those are two things. That's a beautiful answer. So well, do you, man. do you have a favorite book? Yeah. Uh, I would say their eyes were watching gods or Neil Hurston. And why is it your favorite book? Uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, I think it's the most beautiful black novel but you know what? It's 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 the most beautiful novel. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about it. It transcends, right? She writes this this piece, and she was critiqued, you know, by the by the uh, more who were social leaning, like the Richard Wrights of that era, right? Who were saying, "No, you got to write about communism, revolution, the struggle." 
And she was like, no, I just want to write a beautiful novel. There are moments in that book where she's talking about a hurricane. I mean, and it, just, and it, and it covers the culture, you know, uh, of, what was, of, of what was that era so three-dimensionally. But she's writing about a hurricane, right, in Florida that's going down. And like, bro, like I, cry, I had shivers. I was crying, not because it was sad. It wasn't me talking about a sad. She was like, hurricane was this living organism. And like, she was describing it so beautiful. The writing was so beautiful that I cried. You know what I'm saying? Like I had chills and I put a cry. Like that that pen is, I mean, I, I, one could only aspire. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I never, I'll never reach that pen level. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's yeah. Say the author that's again. My, uh, Zora Neil Her Neil Hurston. You know, Zora I've, Neil Hurston. I've mm-hmm. heard about this book my entire life, but as much as I read books, I've never read it. I think that I want that oh. for my Father's Day present. Oh. Bro, get it, bro. Yeah, uh, they made a movie. I would recommend you watch you you read the book. Don't watch the movie. It, it, you watch it after whatever. The like Halle Berry is in it and stuff like that. I, I don't. They didn't really make a huge production movie of it. They kind of was almost like a you know a quick throw up type of to the streaming. You know, shout it out, whatever. Like I I, I want to see people know about the story regardless, and it calls attention to the book. But go hard on that book if you you know. It's my recommendation to anyone. Yeah, I'm on it. Thank you. Yeah. Yo, if you could comp- if you could excuse me, if you could compose a soundtrack for any book, which one would it be and why? <laughs> That's great. Oh man. Oh man. Um I mean right now, okay, so there's a book. This is good. So, okay. What's coming to mind for me right now is this book called Afro Surf. Um and it's 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 more like I mean it's like a coffee table book, but it, it compiles sort of the history of black folks and surfing up until contemporary day. That would be a dope. Yeah, you know, obviously something to surf at. So, yeah. Oh, I think I just gave you an album idea. Oh, sounds, sounds like I that appreciate too. you. I'm free. Okay, <laughs> I see you. Uh, all right. Um, like what that. do we have here? We're coming to the end of these questions. Just the fun ones now. Um, if you could collaborate with any artist, living or dead, to create a soundtrack for a movie who would it be and what would the movie be about i think it would be common and it would be about his life and success mm. that's dope uh, oh bro well, like trials and trip everything yeah mm-hmm. hmm. that's interesting he has like three autobiographies i've read two of them and when he came out with the third i was like what else do you have to say sir <laughs> <laughs> i mean i hear that I actually haven't read any of them. I didn't know. He, I, I, I was a yeah. So I, yeah, I mean, yeah. Would you recommend a, any of them? Um, the first and second one. Uh, do I have one right there? I have. He has one called that I'm looking at right now called One Day It'll All Make Sense. That one was really good. I I like that. That was the second one. I appreciated that one better than the first one. I can't remember the name of the first one, but that one was the second one. And he has a third one too. I think it's called Love, Love Lost or something like that. But anyway, yeah, that's the name of his third album. One day it'll all make sense. Okay, yeah. Anyways, yeah, yeah. I definitely gotta, um, I got, I gotta get on that. But yeah, I, I mean, just as an artist, I mean, I, I, as a rapper, like I've always found him to just have like a flow and an energy and a, a, a command of metaphor, you know, uh, that, that I've always found just, to, to, you know, to mix playfulness and and like and gravity and message. Like I, I feel like, yeah, he's he's top. He's pretty top tier for me. Man. Nah, me too. He's he's. One of the greatest of all, t- the words you just dis- use to describe him are the words I would use to describe him. The mixtures of the things he's able to do are not mm-hmm. many can do them to the same level. He can do them and sound so um, natural. So, I agree. So common. <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Um, if you could teleport to any place in the world right now, where would you go and what would you do there? I would teleport to. Um Right now, because I'm hungry, I haven't eaten my food yet. I'll teleport to um, uh, cent- the center of Mexico City. There's a place called um, um, well, it's it's a it's a um, they make great pulled pork burrito, <laughs> uh-huh. and, but it's like it, it's still the energy is so great, and they make it, and they've been there for years and years and years. And um, yeah, right now I'll just teleport right there, eat that burrito, walk around. Soak in the energy. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. How would you like to be remembered? 
Well, my favorite quote is the Ralph Waldo Emerson uh, about the. It's like, you know, um, it's the his success quote. It's like, and I I don't know the whole quote off top, but it's like to let you know to know that one life has breathed easier uh, because you have existed. You know, um, like that definition of success to laugh often and love much to. So, you know, these types of things I'd like to remember as a guy who laughed often, who loved a lot, you know, who, who created um, fearlessly and and thoughtfully and, and you know, with a, a level of skill, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, who, who yeah, who gave, uh, you know, gave his his gifts, you know, uh, and, and as well as, uh, you know, uplifted his community. And his family. So yeah, that's that's really that's really what, what I would like to be remembered. That is beautiful. I love it. As you were saying that, I, I'm a quote guy, so I, I was rushing on the internet to look up the quote because I wanted mm-hmm. you to give this guy his full credit. So it's it's called success, and I'm gonna read it mm-hmm. for the first time. It says to laugh often and much, to win the respect of intelligent people and the affection of children to earn the appreciation of honest critics and endure the betrayal of false friends, to appreciate the beauty, to find the best in others, to leave the world a bit better, whether by a healthy child, a garden patch, or a redeemed social condition, to know even one life has been breathed easier because you have lived this, is to succeed. Ralph Waldo yeah, Emerson. Man. I love it. Thank you for that. That's the one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before we go, Kyle, you've been an extraordinarily great guest. Is there Thanks. anything you want people to know? Anything you have coming up? Just anything, any misconceptions about you or just anything you want to get off your chest to the people of Earth to let them know about you? I don't think I'm known enough to have any misconceptions, <laughs> but you know, we, we're trying to get there. So I look forward to that, to that place. But, um, no, <laughs> but I will say that... Uh, I'm, I'm going to be releasing uh, probably towards the end of the summer uh, an EP uh, that was produced by my my hero in production, Dan the Automator. Mm. Um, so and yeah, so I'm excited about that. It's going to feature Coast Contra, uh. Uh, who's uh, a you know young group of young uh, top tier uh, MCs who, who happen to be friends with, uh, as well as uh, Jaron Benson, who's a, a, a friend of mine. Look forward to that. Nice. Also getting ready to release a song with MERS uh, and have that animated by Unjust, which I'm also excited about. This is all in, 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 in the vein of the surf rap stuff. Word. You also might catch me uh, in a video soon. I, I'm, re- I'm trying to put this together where I'm on a horse rapping on the beach with a surfboard. So, oh, you know, just, keep shit. <laughs> <laughs> just keep that in your back pocket. That's I happen. bet. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, man, that's that's really it, man. And just you know, just follow your follow your dreams, man. But also, you know, like take care of your team. You know, word. Follow your dreams. Take care of your team. You know what I mean? Yo, Kyle, you, I, I got your back, bro. I don't know. It's sometimes it's rough out there with um artists coming up because everyone's trying to get into a position, so people are like pulling each other down. It's very um. Mm-hmm seldom that you find someone that just wants you to do good i'm that guy mm-hmm. for you kyle just so you know like i don't like everyone can win and i've always wanted you to win because you deserve it yo I, always had i, a good I feel the same about you i want to say something uh yeah I, I i uh we did a song it was the first song and it was like um i got you this is just for your crowd and just for the world to know this of how of how ill of an mc you are bro okay um and like it was way long time ago. It's like, I got you on this verse and you bodied it, bro. I couldn't put out the song because I couldn't, I couldn't come up with a verse that was as good as your verse. You know what? Like, I, I you remember that shit? I, I, I'm going to go look for the song. I remember us doing the song, but now I can't fucking remember it. I want to bring it back. It's funny because, I mean, some of the references might not be like, you know, as relevant now because it's like, but it might be, I don't know, but. I want. I feel like. I feel like now. I could now. Only now. This is like fifteen years later, bro. I had to put my pen. You know what I'm saying? In action. <laughs> I feel like I could now do something that would do justice to your verse, bro. If you could, if you could find it, bro. Anyway, that's how ill. And that was a long time ago. Now you're. I mean, so shout out to you, man. I just I like. 
I say that to say, like, you know, I'm on the same page with that, man. Like, I, you know, I, I cheer for you. you know what I mean, like, see you shine at any moment, man. Like, feel feels like that's a joy for me. So just keep that, you know. I, I appreciate that. that. I appreciate that. But but now, now I want to get on one of your new albums. Now that I, I realized I wasn't on, one, on the old one, bro. I, I want. In oh, on, I got you, bro. We go. Nah, gonna, I want in on the one you're working yeah. on now. The one with all the. Ah, like, on it. Get your boy. I got you. I got you, bro. We get, we'll definitely get you on talk, man. I appreciate that. Yo, Kyle, you've been an awesome guest. I appreciate you, brother. Yo, who you got tonight? The Knicks or the Pacers? I mean, you know, my heart is with the Knicks, but you know what I'm saying we really Boy, hurt I'm up burning. right now. So it's probably, if I had to go, I, I, if I was to go to Vegas, I'd say Pacers. Mm-hmm. But you know, man, we want these Knicks to win. You? Uh, I don't have a horse in the race, but I'm gonna have to go with. I want the Knicks to win, which is crazy. You might be the first person that has ever gotten those words out of my mouth in my <laughs> good, life. Good. Yeah. And the reason oh. I, I, I'm saying the Knicks is because it's very difficult for me to watch Jalen Brinson and not root for that boy. Oh, I agree, man. Uh, I got his jersey, bro. Yeah, anyways, I could go on and on about the Knicks. I'm a lifelong Knicks fan. I'm just really uh, right now. I'm pa- I'm pacing in my apartment in anticipation of this game. So yeah. <laughs> well, well, let me let you go, brother. Eat your food. Thank you so much again, yo, everyone. This has been Kyle Raps. Act like you know. Sign Martial Law Show. Until next time. Peace, love, and positive energy, and we out like that. Yo, yeah. what happened? Too rockin' dope. I'm being fly. Yo, what happened? Too rockin' dope. I'm being fly. I am jazz hidden away like the iron mass Immigration coming, so that's me flying past They think my hip hop was created in a science lab I'm the only thing stopping it from dying fast Who playing the streams? Y'all niggas is buying trash The only emoji I'm using is crying laugh Hope my luck's in and niggas start finding cash Once I got the fish on the hook, I'll start winding back Skills is only for the gifted, you born with it I think all critics should mind a small business You all witness the ball fishes that's why you all grimace Cause I'm spitting all sickness Off star dog and tall Guinness Ruin thoughts start breaking laws and physics Nigga, you all ballistic Sleep and talk to mystics Cover every angle and view all statistics uh, You all addicted, my aim to blow The flames I throw like dragons on Game of Thrones So stop bragging and change your tones Cause I'm on action and will fracture and break your bones Before you be like, what happened and don't make it home Yo, what happened to rockin' dope and being fly Not everybody claim it a man but they can't be the guy Even I reach and try for my slice of the piece of pie Am who I said I was, I am him and he is I What happened to rockin' dope and being fly Now everybody claim it a man but they can't be the guy Even I reach and try for my slice of the piece of pie Am who I said I was, I am him and he is I My style the baddest, leave guys embarrassed I'm a light the chalice, get on the mic Then I'm black like a Miles Morales International law, I see it when you hype your status But you boys are local and you never took a flight to Paris my brains rhyme patterns, designs, flows, and melodies I'm folding enemies and give a fuck about clone celebrities Back for another rodeo, you claim more machine But you Terrence Howard ninjas gonna be like Where did Rody go? I'm the dawn like Cheeto Yeah, ninjas fake a lot That's why if you was handicapped, I would still take your spot You better pray I stop, I came to rock till the day I drop I turn my foes into dancers and make them break them pop Cause I'm the key, I'm the answer, I came to break the lock They better let me in, I've been a giant Nephilim I'll never win, cause I'm holding heat like the desert's wind Time on some black belt poems, we gonna get it in what happened to rockin' dope and being fly Now everybody claim it a man, but they can't be the guy Even I reach and try for my slice of the piece of pie Am who I said I was, I am him and he is I What happened to rockin' dope and being fly Now everybody claim it a man, but they can't be the guy Even I reach and try for my slice of the piece of pie Am who I said I was, I am him and he is I with a splash of ginger ale I had your bitches storm coke right off my fingernail I'm looking down over Atlantic City From my suite, from my balcony Praising the most high, this shit is sweet Send up a bucket of ice, tonight we toast to the light Forever promise to get it You know it come with a price And everything is a gamble, so I'm rolling the dice Cause when both ends of the candle burn Ain't nothing nice, so I set an example Show my youngest a stack Tell them vision on the prize, like ain't no looking back It's the same as cooking crack Now place the chips on the winner, my bread is on 27, get the marble and spinner. Don't you know we hit it big? Winning is all we do, Charlie Sheen. How come they never say the same about your team? Or play on a slot machine, cause shorty, you talking small change. I keep it a hundred, I'm doing this for the cream.
Yo, what happened? To rockin' dope and being fly Now everybody claiming that man But they can't be the guy Even I reach and try For my slice of the pizza pie And who I said I was I am him and he is I